Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Blair Shilly here, with another Future Spouse reading. In this one, my darlings, we're going to be taking a look at your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. I'm going to be answering the question, is there life after marriage? <laughs> Apparently there is. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what yours is going to be like with your significant other. Option number one, you guys get the Jade Crystal. Option number two, Aventurine has chosen you today. And option number three, Lapis Lazuli. See which crystal you're mostly drawn to. Don't overthink it. You know the drill. If you do need a bit more time to make your decision, pause the video because we're going to go ahead and get started with option number one. Option number one, hi, welcome to your reading. If you guys are drawn to this crystal, fits perfectly with today's setup, doesn't it? Gorgeous. Anyway, so if you guys were drawn to Jade, let's go ahead and take a look at your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. Um, but first, I want to take a look at your energies separately. Your energies, the energies of your future spouse, how you make one another feel. Yeah, and then we'll take a look at the relationship dynamic. So it's almost like who you are in this marriage or who you become in this marriage. Let's take a look at your energies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so straight away, guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you, uh, with you and your future spouse. Before you guys got married, there was a bit of drama, okay? There is going to be a bit of drama. There's an energy of choosing. There's an energy of uh, having to overcome certain obstacles. So it could be maybe uh, your future in-laws kind of trying to get in the way or people gossiping or other people, um, other people trying to influence your relationship. But there's such a big energy of having overcome a lot of things because the fourth card is this four of wands. It's the energy of marriage. It's the energy of not giving a flying monkey about what anybody else thinks. But before that, let me say, there is going to be a story, okay? So it's not going to be a fairy tale. You, you all know. You're all grown now. You all know that fairy tales don't exist. But we create our own stories and um, we create our own versions of fairy tales. And here it's very much about overcoming things. It could quite possibly be that you are going to end up choosing between two people. Yeah, with the two of wands over here. For some of you, it's literally... Um, I'm not going to go too, too much into how you might meet your future spouse. Because I have a, a bunch of videos on that anyways. But it could quite possibly be that uh, when you do meet your future spouse, both of you are in some sort of relationships or situationships. And you end up choosing. And it's interesting that your future spouse could come through in, uh, into your life when you're feeling that everybody else has mis betrayed you, has misled you in one way or another. And you find one another. And there's an energy where you feel that the two of you have overcome a lot of obstacles and already in the relationship with your future spouse you're very different to the person that you are now a lot of things have changed for you a lot of perspectives has cha have changed for you mm -hmm. you grew up you realized uh, what people are how they can be how they can behave you've seen a lot of ugly sides to people but I want to say over here that you are happy. You're happy and you figured all of the things out before you said your I do's. Like all the drama, it kind of remains in the past. And you've seen each other in different, in different circumstances. Both at your best and at your worst. And you still... Here at this particular moment, when you're marrying your future spouse, 
you still see that they are the one that you want to be with. No doubts, no questions. Let me dig a little bit deeper. Because you know me, I like to go deep. Let's take a look how you're feeling in this. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have changed. Have changed. You guys uh, have learned that you can't control a lot of things. And you've learned that you don't have to sacrifice your love life for other people's convenience. Yeah. It could quite possibly be that you felt like you... Mm, how do I put this? Maybe you didn't want to fight for your happiness. And here everything has changed. Here, here it's like this energy where you... You're thinking, you're thinking how, hold on a second, how much things have progressed, how much you had to go through, yeah, guys, for sure, there's an energy of like having to go through a lot of things, but again, I keep saying that we're all grown over here, yeah, and um, sometimes life gets, life gets messy, life gets complicated, and you had to be patient. But here you're feeling incredibly happy. And you are sure in this person. You're sure in this person. You're sure in your future spouse. You are confident in your relationship. Because you've already been through so much before. You said your I do's. That now you know you're solid. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, your future spouse, yeah? Let's take a look at uh, their story. How do they feel in this relationship with you, in the marriage? Mm -hmm. Same story, look at that. Like I said, um, again, they're saying that they know that they made the same, uh, the right decision. And I was just going to say, before I pull out the cards, I have a feeling that <laughs> um, that I'm going to pull out the same cards. Because the story is so, is so similar. They feel like they've made the right decision. They put you before a lot of friends, or so-called friends. There, and he's telling me or she's telling me a story here that uh, maybe some friends they were against this union for one reason or another I'm not going to go into that but they're saying that they feel like they've made the right decision there are no regrets over here mm -hmm. Yeah, they most probably go like they're gonna leave somebody for you. They always like I'm always gonna fight for you. I'm always gonna um, like there's an energy of a lot of ups and downs, and they're saying that um, I'm always gonna fight for you. I'm always going to put in the effort to make you mine. And they're quite jealous. They're quite jealous. Your future spouse, they might not always show it, um, but they cherish you. They cherish you a lot to the point where they're afraid of losing you there. It took them, they're telling me, it took me so long to find you that I'm never going to let you go. And it doesn't mean, once again, it doesn't mean that you're living in a fairy tale. Uh, but it does mean that they have, uh, they have the strength and they have the will to start discussing things, to start working on things. Here, your future spouse is telling me a story where they almost lost you. And how it broke their heart and how they are... Uh, they're lost without you, honestly. Even if it's a big macho man that we're talking about uh, and they might not be willingly uh, ready to admit it, they feel lost without you. They feel like there's a very big part missing when you're gone. And they do miss you. 
They do miss you when you're gone, even if it's just for a little while. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, for some of you, my darlings, it could be that you're dealing um, with a long distance relationship over here. Some of you might already have children or your future spouse might have children. Okay, they have a lot to say about you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like it took us a while to get here. But it was so worth it. It's um, again, it's about overcoming adversity and difficulties together. There's something about your future spouse seeing you as, as uh, part of their team. Like you're not competing. Yeah, you're not trying to prove who's better. You're not trying to prove who is what. No, you are... You're in the same boat. You're going in the same direction. And your future spouse over here, they're telling me that this is somebody who's incredibly generous. Incredibly generous and they're willing to put in the effort. They also really like your body. Um, there's a sexual, there's definitely sexual chemistry over here. You're compatible when it comes to uh, to the way that you see what sex should be about, and you know, like your idea of erotica is is, is the same. They love your body. They admire your body. They see you as somebody who's incredibly beautiful or handsome. Hmm. Gorgeous. Okay. Let's take a look at the shadow deck. They feel like they can have fun with you in this marriage. They feel like they can start afresh. This is so interesting. They feel like you're not going to give them shit for like the things that they've done in the past. Because there's definitely an energy of you knowing each other inside and out. And it feels really good because it allows them to not overthink things. It allows them to be themselves. It allows them to have fun. Um, there's something about animals here as well. You, you might have a dog. They might have a dog. There's something about uh, sharing this... <laughs> Sharing this love for animals. For some of you dogs, for some of you it's cats. But they're telling me that with you, it feels like they can turn turn the leaf, yeah? Turn the page start from, a, from a new beginning. Mm -hmm. There's also this thing where you might end up helping them see their worth, see their value, and um, start off with uh, maybe a new career, yeah? It's very interesting, they're showing me how you turn them into, like, you turn them from this werewolf <laughs> with two heads that um, might over, over, over analyze things. You've tamed them in a way. You've tamed them. And they're very grateful for that. You somehow made them see that they're not their own enemy, but they're their friend. And they see a lot of depth in you. And this is what they feel like. But they're still at the moment, uh, when we're talking right now, when I'm channeling those energies, they might still have a lot of fears when it comes to their... Um, career when it comes to their money but they're telling me that in this marriage they feel like they have your support and something about your energy the beautiful energy that you exude uh, whether it's just a kind word whether it's just not questioning you it helps them grow like there's a bit of a spoiler guys over here you're going to live a very wealthy life with you and your future spouse okay so why don't we go ahead and then take a look at the relationship dynamic between the two of you. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, a lot of passion, a lot of charisma. Um, very sexually drawn to one another, guys. There's a lot of sex in your marriage. A lot of flirt flirtatious energy. Like you keep the fire going. You keep the romance going over here. Both of you are pretty cool individuals. So I do see you going out to places that are like hip. I do see you going out with people who are somebody... You know what I'm saying? There's somebody who who are not afraid of standing out. You guys might end up having a lot of actor friends or singer friends. Mm -hmm. And you do travel a lot. Honestly, you guys could be going to places like Dubai. You guys could be going to places like Vegas. You guys could be going to places like, um, I don't know, Mauritius. All of those places. Some of you guys could be visiting a Burning Man. Uh, some of you guys could be going to... Showing you places where maybe... Uh, a lot of exotic places. But you guys like to travel. There's definitely an energy of traveling, exploration. Again, a close connection to animals is coming through. Mm -hmm. Loads of temptations. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, guys, I don't know what it is, but they're literally, they're focusing your attention on the intimacy part of this relationship. So it must be something that's quite important to you. It must be something that... Um, that maybe feels like this is something you didn't want to talk about or you didn't want to know this about yourself. And both of you, you help each other explore. Explore your bodies, explore your desires. Uh, work on your shadow aspects as well. Guys are very kinky, option number one. Pfft, my god, okay. Are you for real now? <laughs> are you for real? Look at this. It's just a confirmation of everything that I've been saying. Um, spontaneous. I would say that there is spontaneity in your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. Spontaneity not only in sex, but also in the decisions that you make, in... Um, the ideas that you have and there's a lot of support it's like you know this energy of lighting up so you say something to your future spouse to your spouse rather yeah and then they're like oh babe that, that sounds really good and they like they they get switched on by it yeah they tune in into your energies and it's not like oh my god what the hell are you on about like just do your thing it's like you are interested in each other you're interested in each other's ideas you're interested in each other's projects And you find each other irresistible, okay? And of course, with time, okay, let's be honest, <laughs> I am going to ruin it a little bit for you, option number one. Uh, with time, the physical physical chemistry dies down a little bit or it transforms into something different. But with you guys, it stays for a very long time. Mm hmm and people are jealous, okay? I'm going to say this, guys. People are jealous. There are going to be exes coming uh, into your life. There are going to be people from the past coming into your life. Jealous of the relationship that you have. Jealous of maybe of the lifestyle that you end up creating together. Because once again, once you meet your future spouse, it could be that they're just starting off, you know, they might be working on a startup or they're maybe relocating to a different country or something like this. But it's both of you, when you put your energies together, you start creating a certain lifestyle where, you know, you got the bling bling and, and, and you're going to places that a lot of people um, might not be able to go to, yeah? Mm-hmm. 
There's an energy of people being jealous. It is what it is. Trying to persuade you that, you know, you didn't make the right decision. But that's the thing. You guys are so solid over here. And don't get me wrong. There are going to be temptations for both you and your future spouse. We're people. We're tempted. But there, I don't see any acting upon it. Mm -mm. You, got, you got eyes for one another. With the Six of Pentacles. Another thing that's coming through very strongly over here, guys, is that you, you're, you're going to end up being your future spouse's screensaver and lifesaver, okay? You're going to go from their screensaver to their lifesaver. Both of you find each other very attractive. There's so much passion over here, my god. Okay. Okay. Show me more. Your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. Mm hmm It's interesting. Um Helping, helping you work on seeing self-love as something that's essential rather than something that's egoistical or narcissistic. Okay? So there's definitely an energy where you kind of maybe thought that self-love was, was weird, was odd, or maybe you had the wrong idea of it. And it's funny, you're going to end up mirroring one another to the point where you realize that self-love is essential and you're not afraid of showing that self-love. You're not afraid of being seen as, uh, you know, somebody who puts themselves first. Because in this relationship dynamic, your future spouse wants you to put yourself first. Because this is, they're going to be doing that too, but does that make sense? And then from a place of you, both of you being fulfilled, both of you feeling like you are, you know, you have enough resources, then you go into like loving one another. Mm -hmm. You give each other freedom. You give each other freedom and you don't hold grudges. Like you don't, like you don't go like, okay, remember that shit you did like, seven years ago on a Tuesday at 12 a.m.? No, none of this. Like, you talk through things. You talk through things and you forgive one another. Yeah? Because, of course, everybody messes up. Everybody messes up. We all mess up. But you find a way to let the other person be free in who they are and what they do and what they explore because we all change, guys. Yeah? You can't get married at somebody when you're 20 and then be married... Uh, you know, to the same type of person when you're 45, they change. Even if it's the same person, they change. And it's very important to be in a relationship where you feel that you can change. That today you are an accountant, tomorrow you are a rock star, and after tomorrow you're, you know, you're petting pigeons at the zoo. You know what I'm saying? And this is where you give each other space. And you forgive. And this is so important to be able to forgive and not hold grudges. Like you feel your feelings. That's what the freedom is all about. Like you get mad. But once it's done, it's done. You let it go. And that's a very healthy way of dealing with, with things. To feel your feelings, to process them and to move on. Let me try this oracle deck. I don't know how it's going to work in the relationship feeling. Uh, relationship feeling. Relationship reading. But let me see. This is the Atlas Oracle. In case you guys uh, are interested. I got it off of Etsy. From a lovely lady. I think she's from the UK. Right, let's take a look. Your relationship dynamic with your future spouse or any advice maybe that your spiritual team has for you when it comes to this reading. Masculine. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, I think they're just repeating the same thing that I was talking about when I was t um, channeling your future spouse's energy. So with the masculine over here, there's definitely an energy of growth, of potential when it comes to their career, of taking action. And I think, uh, to be honest with you, both of you are going to uh, support one another. But I see the masculine really growing as somebody who maybe is a businessman or somebody who's um, like a career is, is um, picking up over here. Mm -hmm. For some of you, I've just been uh, talking for the last 25 minutes about your ex. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't take it. Okay, But look at this reunion with somebody from your past. So if somebody with J, M, and or S in their name feels familiar, if the picture and painting seems uh, familiar, this could be somebody from your past. If it's not resonating, again, reconciliation, this is where you guys break up and then make up. Break up and then make up, okay? And that's normal. Once again, it's normal. But you always tend to gravitate towards one another. You always tend to come back to one another. And that's some good stuff over here. Option number one. This is where I'm going to end your reading. Don't forget to claim the magic of it if you enjoyed it. If you do want to claim it, down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Hit the notification button so you don't miss out any of my other upcoming content. For personal readings, do send me an email. The email is in the description box below. Um, so there's a link to my Patreon page with more exclusive content, additional discounts, and much, much more. So make sure to check it out. All right, my darlings, take care of your beautiful selves now. Bye. Option number two, if you guys were drawn to the Adventuring Crystal. Hi, welcome to your reading. Get comfy. We're going to be taking a look at your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take a look at your energy separately. I did this with option number one. It worked out quite well. Uh, we're going to take a look at how you feel in this marriage of yours. Yeah, with your future spouse, how your future spouse feels. Option number one got a bit of a backstory of what was going on. So let's take a look at what the cards have to say to you. Your energies, how you're going to feel in this marriage. Mm-hmm. Balanced, fair, protected, um, financially secure for sure. Everything will be documented. There's an energy of quite possibly you guys getting a visa or some sort of residency permit uh, because of the marriage with your future spouse. Yeah. So it has a lot to do with documentation. It has a lot to do with legal things. Uh, it has a lot to do with making sure that you stay somewhere or that you get something. Uh, I feel that you guys are feeling very secure over here, very protected, uh, very grounded, that's for sure. It's all, I think for you, you might be somebody who's quite logical, or you could be somebody who's very thorough when it comes to paperwork, when it comes to uh, division of assets, uh, you know, businesses, all sorts of things. It looks like you guys are incredibly smart, option number two, smart, wise, and uh, you come well prepared. You come well prepared, you're quite experienced. So you're like, okay, I'm not going to be taking for a ride anymore. Maybe you're somebody who was married before. And now you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do things differently now. But whatever it is, um, whatever the case, you're definitely feeling secure. You're definitely feeling grounded. You're definitely feeling that you are getting what is yours. And it's all official. So if you guys have been in a, in a relationship pattern where men or women, they weren't ready to commit. Yeah, usually it's, uh, it is men usually, you know, let's be honest. Usually men aren't willing to commit. Women are more open to commitment, to official commitment. But you know, sometimes they're different stories. Mm, with this, with your future spouse, they are not going to... They're not going to be against it at all. Matter of fact, they're going to be all for it. To make you theirs. Alright, let me see what, what else you're feeling in this marriage. 
You guys could be marrying somebody who feels like a friend, okay? The Six of Cups, this is the energy of nostalgia. This is the energy of feeling that you have a lot of memories with somebody. Yeah, you created a lot of memories with somebody. So by the time you're going to be marrying your future spouse, if a lot of you have been wondering if it's going to be an arranged marriage or if it's just going to be a marriage because of the documents, it's not. It's not. Um, you do have very warm feelings towards your future spouse. It does feel like somebody who's a friend, somebody who you can confide in, uh, confide in, somebody you can talk to. And I think it's like somebody you can really be goofy with. Um, so for some reason, I'm seeing that for some of you, you know, you could be somebody who's a lawyer and you have to be really serious. Yeah. Or you could be somebody who's a doctor and you have to be really serious and really Mm, responsible most of the time and then when it comes to your future spouse you can literally just goof around you can be silly you can uh, act like you're 15 again you see what i'm saying it's that sort of freedom that's coming through over here uh, i'm also seeing that you option number two you're surrounded by people who matter yeah so maybe it's not going to be a lot of people but it's people who really matter in your life and once again i'm, I'm hearing that drake's <laughs> drake's lyrics there are no new friends it feels like those are all the people that you you know. There are some new acquaintances, but with the Six of Cups, it's usually people that you've known. It's friendships. Uh, it's people from a place that you both have in common, that you have a lot in common with, that where there's a lot of memories connected to this place. Okay. So for a lot of you, there's an energy of having found your feminine side, having feeling that you found who you've been looking for. So if you are female watching this, it's the energy of having, gosh, it's almost like, I want to say having your feminine energies activated, like a superpower. And I'm not being funny over here. I'm actually saying it, it is a superpower when you, you, when you embrace it, when you can use it, it is a superpower. And for the masculine over here, you finally found the woman that gives you this energy of femininity, that gives you this kindness, this nurturing energy, this softness, this tenderness that you need it. It's very beautiful. It's, it, they're showing me it's like a play of energies. They're showing me like a ball of energy and it, it kind of transforms and it adapts and it switches colors. It goes from like light blue to light pink and then it goes, it pulsates into red. There's an energy where you, you discover different aspects of yourself because of this marriage, because of this relationship. For some of you, you discovered that you want to be a mother over here, yeah? You get those, like you become broody. <laughs> You're like, I want a baby. I want a baby, baby. Let's do this. You're feeling taken care of. You're feeling hurt over here. Your emotions matter. And I think it's very important for you. Your emotions matter. Your, your emotions are valued. Your emotions are taken into consideration. Your intuition, I don't know, for some reason with your future spouse, you become more intuitive. It's either because you start feeling safe. It's either because they help you go into a place of power for you. We all have places of power, yeah? But it's a combination. It's a beautiful combination. Guys, um, I'm going to say it like this. They're telling me that the heart, the heart has melted. The heart has melted. Huh. So interesting. You feel, I don't know, there's just this energy where you're in love. But I don't know why they're telling me it, it, it happens with this like fluidity to it, a beautiful fluidity to it. Mm -hmm. 
and you're being treated like a lady. You're spoiled over here. The Four of Cups, um, they're telling me like, you're spoiled. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, yeah? You're spoiled because sometimes it can be like, mm, you know, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to eat. And and, and, and your future spouse is like, do you want to go there? And like, I don't want. I don't know what I want. You know, and they allow you to be the, like moody, to be in that, you know, a bit of a diva energy. They're cool with that. They're not telling you like, all right, you need to like cut the shit and, and like make a decision. No, but this is like where you really feel that you can be... You know, you can stretch and you can be a bit lazy and you know that you're accepted and you know that you're taken care of because there's the side of you uh, with the justice that is completely different. But with your future spouse, it feels like you can be a bit of a, I don't know, they show me like a bit of a cat, you know, the cats where they just lay in the purr and they do all this and oh, nice. And they allow you, they, they want to, like, there's this energy of wanting to cater to you. But at the same time, you're not married to, um, gosh, what was that word? Everybody was, no, you know, I'm not going to use it. I might use it wrong. Uh, but, you know, you're not married to a spineless person. No, of course not. But it's like this dynamic that you have and you're enjoying it. Both of you are enjoying it. Okay, let's take a look at the shadow um, deck. If the shadow deck wants to say anything about how you're feeling in this relationship, in this marriage of yours, to your future spouse, obviously. Oh my gosh. Guys, I'm just going to let it sink in for a second. I mean, when the empress comes through the emperor, my gosh. Okay, so it could be that um, we're talking about a very mature relationship and you're like, you know what? I finally met somebody who's uh, on my level, who understands me. For some of you, we could be talking about a power couple over here, literally a power couple in the sense both of you could be into business. Uh, both of you could be into like, you know, high powered lawyers, um, you could be um, doctors and so on and so forth. Um, you know, you could be stars, you could be bloggers, vloggers, but the energies of the emperor and the empress is when there's a perfect fit. If there is such a thing, okay? As close as, to perfect fit as you can get. And you are like telling me that, you know, if you, again, if you're a guy, the energy of like, I can fully be in my emperor energy because she's an empress. And the girls are telling me I can be in my empress energy because I'm next to an emperor. Where you allow yourself to be who you are. Where you take your masculine or you take your feminine energy and you build on it. And you let it work for you rather than against you when you're not suppressing it. Mm -hmm. You guys could be in an interracial marriage, by the way, with the temperance. Sagittarius energy coming through, Aries energy coming through, Libra, of course, is making an appearance. You're feeling very balanced. It's nice. Balanced. Telling me you made the right decision, you made the right shot. And you like how things are progressing. You like how things are progressing. Okay, let's take a look at um, how your future spouse feels in this relationship. My gosh, this is so intense. Option number two. Let's take a look at how your future spouse feels in this relationship. And then we we'll take a look at the relationship dynamic, yeah? How does your future spouse feel being married to you? <laughs> I 
<laughs> right place at the right time. This is the first thing that came into my mind over here. That I can, they're proud. Uh, there's somebody, I don't know if it's um, the way that you look, if it's your energy, if it's um, what you do. They're saying, I'm just, I'm proud of her. Or I'm proud of him. There's a lot of pride. Uh, it looks like your future spouse is somebody who has very high standards. Since we were talking about the emperor and the empress energies, they have high standards, guys. Because they know what they're worth. Not because they think that they're better than anybody, but because they know what they're worth. They know what they can live with and they know what they can't live with. And here they're telling me that they can't live without you because... Um... <laughs> If somebody asks them what's their better side, they stand back and point at you. They're feeling incredibly proud of you. They show you off. They show off your picture. They talk about you whenever there's a chance. Some people find it annoying, but they don't give a shit. Okay? They like to talk about you. They like to mention you. They like to name drop. Yeah? Because they're proud of your achievements. And if you're thinking, though, I haven't achieved anything, it, it's not about that. It's just about you. How you go, go about living your life, about your values, about how you see the world. Okay. They really like the fact that they can talk to you. Four of Wands has a lot to do with communication, has a lot to do with stability. They like the fact that you see the beauty in life, yeah? They're feeling that they, there's a happy home. They're laughing, they're saying happy life, happy wife. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> they know the basics, option number two. They know the basics, they know the fundamentals. But there's something about your joie de vivre. There's something about the way that you... You try to see the best in things. And they're telling you there's something about the way that you have the ability to turn something mundane into something special, into something unique. It might have something to do with decoration. It might have just something to do with you being in a room. Like your future spouse is incredibly in love with you guys. Incredibly in love with you. Very deeply in love with you. There's no doubt about that. I mean, when we get the marriage card over here, then there's nothing that I would rather do than be married to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, I'm seeing there's somebody wealthy over here. Your future spouse is coming through somebody wealthy. And they're telling me that um, for a very long time, they kind of chased paper. And they thought that this is where happiness was, uh, was. But they're telling me that it was when you spend this money on somebody you love and you see it bring them joy. This is what makes them happy. Because your future spouse comes through as somebody whose love language is presence and creating financial stability for you. Creating financial stability for your offsprings. You make them better. I don't know why I keep hearing songs today, yeah? And I keep hearing right now that I'm a movement by myself, but I'm a force when we're together. Baby, I'm good all by myself, but baby, you, you make me better. My gosh. Okay. I think I'm reading for, like, future millionaires. Not even joking, guys. And you know I like to keep my readings real, but there's an energy where you are their best Asset, the best thing that happened to them. I mean, all of those pentacles over here, they feel like it won't matter without you. None of it matters without you. This is what I keep hearing. And they want to give you the best. Like only the best for my baby. And they show you off. They really do show you off again with the nine of pentacles. They're afraid of losing you. There's a lot of uh, energy of a heartbreak over here. Afraid of losing you. Um, 
the kind of being let me put it this way they might have some self-esteem issues your future spouse and that they're, they're afraid that you might leave them for somebody younger better looking and they're saying like i'm doing everything to make her wishes come true or to make his wishes come true but it's an illusion of course yeah we know that moon is an illusion but they're afraid that deep down they're afraid that you might lose them so they're doing um that you, they might lose you rather so they're doing everything that they can To make your life, to make your life comfortable, to make your life good, to make you feel loved. Okay, let's take a look at the shadow aspect, and then we'll take a look at the uh, relationship dynamic between you and your future spouse. You make them feel like they're the winner, okay? In this relationship, I, I don't know, there's something about your support makes them feel like they're the winner. And even though they have those self-esteem issues, I mean, we all have self-esteem issues, guys. If you don't have a self-esteem issue, then no. Uh, let's be real here, yeah? But they feel like they're the winner with you. They feel like they like they owe a lot of things to you. Transformation, Scorpio energy. Saying you came and you took a lot of things away. Again, the King of Pentacles. See, all of the cards keep repeating themselves. Nine of Pentacles over here. The Knight of of uh, not the Knight. The King of uh, Pentacles, Nine of Cups. They were lost without you. They really were. They weren't ready maybe to admit it to themselves, but it does look like they were very lost without you. Okay. Let's take a look at the relationship dynamic. You're going to have with your future spouse... my gosh guys i mean happy happy life this sounds vanilla and it sounds cliche and of course you're going to have some issues and of course you're going to have some arguments but it's so stable and i know like nowadays it's hard to believe that you can have a happy life that you can have a stable home but this is what it's all about You might end up having quite a few children over here. So then you might be somebody who might uh, have uh, up to, I don't know, up to six, for some of you, six children. Four to six children. And you do everything together, working as a team, yeah. I see it's like a lot of little um, things that you do together that make up your life, that make up those beautiful memories, creating a lot of memories. Six of Wands, again, it's very much about victory, celebrating victories in life, being able to be happy for one another. Okay, loads of passion. Look at this. Again, Wands and Wands and Wands, loads of passion, guys. Passion, being able to flirt with one another. You guys might end up dressing up in the bedroom, uh, I don't know, all sorts of all sorts of kinky things. And again, it feels like a friend. It feels like somebody who's a friend. So inviting a lot of friends over. Uh, okay, maybe not a lot of friends, a lot of acquaintances, a few friends over. 
but feeling very comfortable around one another, being able to open up, being able to talk about different things, uh, not being afraid of being goofy or looking like a fool, of making mistakes, not being afraid to open up about certain dreams and aspirations. Uh, for some of you, it's literally nights of Netflix and chill and things like this, yeah? So I don't see it necessarily being something grand, you know, or like you're taking over the world. No, you're just happy in the everyday things. And sometimes that's all we need to see the happiness and value in the everyday things and going shopping together and picking up a, a laundry detergent, you know. It's a, it's a freaking art to be able to do that with somebody like over the course of years and not get bored and not so get lost in the routine. And this is what you manage to do. And it's beautiful. And through thick and thin and through changing of your bodies and through changing of different lifestyle circumstances, you stick together. You end up purchasing a lot of things together. Yeah. And again, you create, they, they are saying like you create some sort of difference over here with legal matters. So you have, you're going to have a very common, um, a very, hold on a second, you're going to have some sort of common idea that you want to change something and you will work on it. Uh, let's try and uh, this new try this new oracle deck over here it's called the atlas oracle i think if you guys are interested brand new let's see how it's going to work with a love reading mm -hmm. yeah helping you come out of your shelf Yeah, look at this, beautiful, like just what I was talking about. When you come out of your shell, when you're not afraid to start talking about things, uh, when you face the darkness together, the darkness of you, the darkness of certain fears, mm -hmm. and when you explore, look at this, coziness, complacency, when you take off the socks and you start walking on the grass to start to get this new feeling, to get this, this energy of exploration. But you do feel cozy with one another. Yeah? Now look at the soulmate. If you guys associate with soulmates, this is your soulmate. I don't know, twin flames, I'm not really, I don't really like the twin flame energy uh, in the sense, like the connotation that this, uh, this word has, but um, this is your soulmate with the Six of Cups as well. This could be your soulmate, your soul family. Connection involves a close friend, romantic partner, or tribe. So you create this beautiful tribe together with your future spouse. All right, my darlings, option number two. This is where I'm going to end your reading. I hope you enjoyed it and it resonated. Don't forget to claim the magic of this reading down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill helps the channel grow. If you guys are up for a personal read, do send me an email. The email's in the description box below. So it's the link to my Patreon page with more exclusive content, additional discounts, and much, much more. So make sure to check it out. All right, my darlings, take care of your beautiful selves now. Bye. Option number three, and welcome to your reading. If you guys were drawn to the Lapis Lazuli Crystal, get comfy. We're about to find out your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. But before we do that, I want to take a look at your energies in the marriage and your future spouse's energies in the marriage separately. So let's take a look at your energies first, how you will feel in this marriage. Maybe we'll get a bit of a backstory on uh, how, you came to, <laughs> how you came to be married to this person, to your future spouse. Mm-hmm. Okay, a lot of intensity coming through over here. Uh, getting married through a lesson. Okay, interesting, interesting. So here you're telling me that you're feeling... You're feeling like you've uh, learned a lot of things. You're feeling like... Your future spouse, I think it's like a sort of a message to you where you are right now. They're saying that not everything is as it seems and the person 
you're gonna end up marrying your future spouse they're gonna end up being completely different to what you expected them to be on the first date or the first time you met them so it's this energy where you are maybe meeting this king of swords and the king of swords they have this poker face king of swords is not somebody who wants to deal with emotions king of swords is all about logic it's all about practicality yeah but with time they open up with time you guys have the key you guys have the energy to unlock different parts of this person and they end up being somebody who is passionate they end up being somebody who is very caring but i think it's the part that they were afraid of because it puts them in a vulnerable place it puts them in a place that gets them out of um, of their comfort zone and you kind of feel like <laughs> Dora the Explorer, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, I'm only joking, but you feel like you have literally opened up this person to themselves. Because your intuition, you guys are very intuitive. That's why you chose the crystal that was actually used, well, said to be used by uh, Egyptian demigods in order to communicate with... Uh, with deities and for rituals and all sorts of things. And I feel like a lot of you guys could be very intuitive and your intuition will lead you towards your future spouse. And your mind will be like, what? That that person is, is like, what? What's going on? This isn't what we want. This isn't what we usually go for. But your intuition will say, listen, give it time. Because this person, this is a mask. And then you take off the mask and you see the real thing. You see the real deal. And you're like, oh my God, okay, now I see. Now it makes sense. So you're feeling like you have a special power over your future spouse. And you do. You have like this sort of <laughs> the access to parts of him or her that nobody else has. And that makes your bond so much stronger that makes you feel so much closer. The sexual chemistry is all the charts over here. And you're feeling that you're opening yourself up to somebody you can trust. You're also loving, you're telling me that you, you in this particular relationship, you're loving the person that you're with, you're loving your future spouse, um, their hobbies, the way that he looks, the way that he behaves. And I'm saying he, it could be she. Anyways, I'm just going to go with the flow, guys, because if I'm going to keep uh, trying to accommodate to everybody, it's not going to turn into a reading. It's going to turn into me trying to make sure that everybody's included. So I'm going to be talking as I'm going to be talking, and you just turn it the way that it needs to be understood for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at this, you're feeling secure, you're feeling taken care of. Taken care of, you're feeling like, I don't know, it's this energy of standards. You have a lot in common with your future spouse, a lot in common. It could be something to do with art, it could be something to do with design, it could be something to do with wanting a higher standard of living over here. And I was talking about melting of the heart, I think for option number two, but here it's a very similar story where you took somebody who has been through a lot of uh, crap in their life and who kind of gave up on love and just with your presence, just with your energy, uh, again, maybe with your intuition, maybe you guys are somebody who's very good when it comes to psychology and understanding people, you have melted them and you have discovered a part of him that you didn't know he had. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're feeling very empowered over here. Very empowered over here. Very confident, empowered, smart. You make a lot of decisions here. Hmm. 
This could be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I don't know if you're going to end up doing a lot of things that might have to do with charity or it might have to do with social events. Um, but there's definitely an energy where you, in your marriage, you've overcome a lot of fears, right? Self-imposed fears. Let me see which fears. interesting you might have might have had had a fear of commitment and you end up being in an incredibly committed relationship an incredibly committed relationship there was a fear that you know that you weren't wanted that you weren't like something about not being able to stick it out long term Mm -hmm. Six of Cups, exactly. Some of you might have had fears of, uh, I don't know, maybe you didn't want children. Maybe you don't want children at this particular moment. It might change later on. You're also telling me that here there is uh, an end to a particular relationship dynamic within your own family that you were afraid of repeating. But you took that step forward. You created your own path over here. You created your own story. Hmm. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, how your future spouse feels in this relationship. Feels being married to you. What, what they have to say. Brought them back to life. Brought them back to life, guys. Again, they're saying a very similar story that here with the Five of Swords, they were on the verge of giving up. I think that at some point for some of you, it's somebody who gave up on feelings. You might meet your future spouse when they're going through a breakup yeah, or they're going through a very difficult period in their life. Very difficult period. They're saying, I've never thought that I would be happy to see them, to, to, to get this experience, to get this feeling again. The feeling of excitement, the feeling of, uh, again, being brought back to life. They keep talking about feeling that you are the light. The light that showed them the way out. I don't know if you guys are going to be traveling by train a lot. They're showing me a lot of trains. They're showing me a lot of... Uh, maybe for some of you, it's a long-distance relationship. Yeah? Maybe one of you will have to relocate or move by train or by boat. But they're saying it doesn't matter how far away. It doesn't matter which <laughs> which transportation I have to take. You know, I'm going to get there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you. Hmm. They might be born in October. And now uh, orange might be their favorite color. But they're willing to work. They're willing to put in the effort. Yeah, you guys might end up working together. Or you might be working together right now. Some of you, you might already know this person. But I think um, they're saying like in this marriage, they feel that they found their purpose. They found their purpose. They found their place. And there's something about you making them laugh like they never laughed before. Your optimism, your... Hmm, maybe sometimes even naivete and all the, like what makes you you. Makes him feel alive again. 
overcoming fears. Could be dealing with a Leo over here, by the way, guys. And it's interesting the saying you could be meeting in August with the two eights. June, July, August are going to be important. He feels that you are stronger. He's opening up and uh, he says, uh, I feel like she's stronger than I am. And I was saying to option number two, guys, I'm going to say he and she, but you turn it the way that you need to turn it. Because if I'm going to try to accommodate to everybody, this is going to turn into like me trying to just make sure that everybody feels included. When I'm talking about he and she, you know what I'm saying. Masculine, feminine, you turn the energy how you need to turn the energy. But your future spouse over here feels that you're very stubborn. <laughs> you're very stubborn. You're somebody who can't be swayed to do something. And they adapt a different approach uh, to dealing with you, to doing things with you. Mm-hmm. This is somebody who wants to give anything that they have. They're quite generous. Yeah, your future spouse comes through somebody who's um, who's quite generous. And they feel that they have a lot to give to you. They want to create this financial stability for you. That's for sure. They just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. Like, I've been looking for a lot of things and I didn't know I could find them all in one person. And they've been misled. They've been left. I don't know. For some of you, they're saying like I've been left, just left behind, feel like I'm left behind. But uh, in this marriage, they feel like they're back on a horse. In this marriage, they feel like they, they have the energy again. Their vitality improves there. Like it's it's like a second, I don't know, it's like a reawakening energy that's coming through over here. A reawakening energy. Show me more. He feels very comfortable with you. Mm-hmm. Feels like he doesn't have to fight anymore. Look at this, the Five of Swords. So it could be that first, um, they're saying that they might have been somebody who's quite hostile. Yeah, or it could be somebody who had to deal with a lot of hostilities in their life. Uh, whether it was like, you know, some sort of conflict or, you know what I'm saying. But now with you, they feel like they're part of a team. They're part of a soul trap. There was a lot of loneliness over here, guys, for your future spouse. A lot of loneliness before they met you. So they feel like they can finally, they finally could settle down and feel like they belong somewhere now. Okay. Very interesting. So let's take a look at the relationship dynamic then between you and your future spouse. Lovely option number three. With Lapis Lazuli. Let's take a look. Relationship dynamic between the two of you, you and your future spouse. Again, a lot of orange, a lot of orange. Okay, so um, I know that the sexual chemistry is important, and I think the sexual chemistry came out for all three options today, a bit of a spoiler. Um, but you're very compatible, very compatible when it comes to the temperament, the sexuality, sensuality. Uh, it's the energy of flirting with one another, not, um, not giving in to, you know, 
not giving in to the mundane, if you will. Very financially secure. Very financially secure. It looks like both of you are quite wealthy. Both of you uh, are quite stable. There's definitely an energy of wanting to create a beautiful home, guys, for sure. There's something about design. There's something about wanting to be in a beautiful place. Wanting to, um, to create more than a home. To create maybe a legacy of some sort. Yeah, to leave something behind, to make sure that it's not only you who are taking care of, but it's your children, it's your great children, and your great 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 children. Yeah, this is definitely a household where you guys like to eat a lot, a lot of nice stuff. This is where you like to display certain things. I'm seeing a lot of like uh, maybe pictures being on display. It's interesting. Option number three, they're giving me a lot of details. So it must be something that's quite important for you. You must be somebody who uh, who is very who's very aware of your surroundings and maybe somebody who is very easily affected by your surroundings. So for you, it's nice to live in a uh, for you, it's important to live in a nice area, to have good neighbors, to have good schools nearby, um, to have loads and loads of things, to be able to have your friends come over and uh, stay, you know, to be able to entertain. Uh, the Queen of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, this is definitely somebody who likes to um, have nice material things. And this is what I see you guys having. enjoying life being able to you know go on holidays and all sorts of things yeah look at this there's definitely an energy of um helping each other climb the social ladder and helping each other uh with your projects being supportive of one another that's for sure i do see you guys coming out a lot going out a lot to restaurants uh, you know, bars, rest, um, restaurants, I just said, but you know what I'm saying, like places, uh, I'm seeing also theaters, sightseeing, art exhibitions, concerts. Like I'm seeing you guys are living a, a really good social life over here. A really rich social life. Mm -hmm. Two children at least. And a lot of romance. Look at this. Two children at least and a lot of romance. Hmm. Candlelit dinners. Surprising one another. That's for sure. Surprising one another. controlling who and why. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maturing together. Maturing together. Uh, letting go of the codependent relationship tem tendencies. So you might end up starting off maybe in this energy of a codependent relationship. But uh, let me say, uh, guys, over 90% of uh, relationships are codependent in one uh, way or another but once you see it once you mature together once you release control of the situation um, they're telling me that this is going to help you work on it yeah because i keep saying it's not um it's not a fairy tale it's not a fairy tale we deal with things how we can deal with things. But you find the balance within one another. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sometimes it feels like two villains <laughs> that came together. And they're showing me that the past is going to teach you some very valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. Learning to trust one another. Learning to communicate with one another. Facing your fears. Now we're diving deep, eh? Now we're diving deep. Option number three. But there's a lot of romance. 
a lot of romance. But you guys, your future spouse is coming into your life uh, to help you work through a lot of uh, self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, trying to control things, releasing codependent um, tendencies, learning to communicate. Like with you, again, it's, it's very much about lessons. Lessons of the soul, lessons of the heart. Hmm. Show me which lessons. This relationship dynamic will help you. Will help you learn. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of you guys, I see that you tend to be very set in your ways. In the way that you think, uh, in the way that, you know, you, you think things are going to work out. And they're saying that one of the lessons over here that you're going to be, like, learning in this particular relationship with your future spouse is how to let go. How to get out of your comfort zone of thinking that you know everything. Mm -hmm. Changing your perspective and uh, not, not feeling that you have to sacrifice things. feeling like you have to sacrifice things, like you have to sacrifice your happiness for things or for people. Okay, show me more about the relationship dynamic between you and your future spouse. Uh, this is a brand new deck. This is the Atlas Oracle, I believe. I'm still getting used to it, still seeing how it plays out in relationship readings and all sorts of readings, but let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Free will, decision, and judgment. Yeah, it does look like you guys are going to um, learn how to make certain decisions that maybe you wouldn't normally make in this relationship. Learning how to have this energy of freedom. Learning how to release judgment. Of yourself, of the situation, of your future spouse. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of you, uh, you're going to be working with your feminine energy. Learning how to work with it. Learning how to see it as a blessing. Learning how to work with your emotions. Why is it important? Mm-hmm. Again, so you can purify your waters. Yeah, you can cleanse your emotions. You can let go of things that are stuck in your subconscious. And so you can develop compassion towards yourself, mostly. Okay, show me more about the relationship dynamic. Uh-huh, learning, <laughs> learning how to stop controlling things. This is important. Both of you are going to be teaching one another how to stop trying to control things, how to stop trying to rush things, and how to stop procrastinating. There's about, uh, you know, learning that certain things take certain times. And learning how to just be in the flow. Learning how to be in the flow. Mm -hmm. Alright, last couple of cards for you, my darlings. When it comes to your relationship dynamic. With your future spouse. <laughs> oh, a bit of drama, mama. But there we go. What are you going to do? Both of you are incredibly good looking. All right, let's put it that way. Let's just put it out there. You're very good looking. Five of Cups uh, in this particular deck is when there might be some arguments when it comes to... Um, Somebody may be trying to sli like slide into your DMs or slide into your future spouse's DMs, okay? Because um, there's a lot of temperament that's coming through over here. Both of you could be fire or earth signs, but there's a lot of temperament that comes through over here. And there are going to be some intense, um, intense arguments, but then there's going to be some intense makeup sessions as well. <laughs> It is what it is, my darlings. It is what it is. 
Mm-hmm. But you're also going to give each other peace of mind. In one way or another, there's an energy of giving each other peace of mind. But it's through those energies of conflict that a lot of the things we didn't know we had, like they surfaced to our conscious mind. And then you can purify it, then you can work through it, then you can put in the effort. Mm -hmm. And you can start like sort of, there's this energy of rewriting things in your relationship dynamic with your future spouse. Like realizing you can make your own rules. And I think this is what you're going to do. Maybe you're going to realize that certain rules imposed by society or certain ways of being in a relationship, they don't work for you. And you create your own plan. You create your own journey. You create your own detailed analysis of what things, what works for you and what doesn't. And then start, uh, things start going very smoothly for you. Because you're playing, you know, you're marching to the beat of your own drum. You're dancing to your own pan flute. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, option number three. This is where I'm going to end your reading, darlings. I hope you enjoyed it and it resonated. Don't forget to claim the magic of this reading down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out any of the other upcoming content. For personal readings, send me an email. The email is in the description box below. So it's the link to my Patreon page with more exclusive content, additional discounts, and much, much more. So make sure to check it out. Uh, my darlings, take care of your beautiful selves now. Bye.